Ooh. Hey kid, what you doing watching this stupid film? Don't you want to have fun playing Sega? Sega? Sega who? Wrong answer, pal. Show him! When a game console reaches the end of its life and people start moving away from it to whatever is next, those final games that it pumps out normally fall into two categories. Crap and awesome. Yeah, okay, Sonic 3D isn't exactly crap. It was trying something new and in my opinion it failed on the fun factor. But behind the rather random gameplay style for a Sonic game is a game that has no right to being on the console. How the hell did this little system go from stuff like this to stuff like this? Yes, whilst many, including for the most part Sega themselves, had started again onto new systems, a select few games were still coming out, and for the most part, these are some of the most technically advanced and experimental games to come out. And that goes for all consoles. Well, eventually, even those devs have to eventually move on, which always begs the question, how much more can you possibly squeeze out of your favourite system, which in my case is the Mega Drive? Well, bring on 2019 and Bitmap Bureau's latest release, Xeno Crisis. Or Xeno Crisis, if you prefer. Xeno Crisis. Yes, a brand new Mega Drive game in 2019, and sure, that's not exactly that big of a deal, considering a good few games still come out for the system every single year, but Xeno Crisis is one that's worth keeping an eye on. It started its life as a Kickstarter back on December the 11th, 2017, with a $20,000 goal, and one day later they did an update saying that they just reached 92% of their goal. And guys... They smashed it. We're talking £72,569 by 1,289 backers. They did extra stretch goals to get more extra levels in there, a uh, two player mode as well, extra bosses, all that sort of stuff. And they wanted to get it out by October 2019. And today is Halloween. Guys, they did it. Bitmap Bureau, this one goes out to you guys. So this is Xeno Crisis, a game that I'm capturing using the Mega SG and a 6 button wireless 8 bit DO controller. A distress call comes in, you get called out to fight the aliens, and if you're thinking Smash TV meets aliens with a Doom paint job slapped on top, then you're spot on. The game obviously looks awesome, and I am very happy to report that it plays damn good too, again with the 6 button controller. The way it works is that you move around with the D-pad and you shoot your weapons in all four directions using the Y, B, A and X buttons and honestly it only took me no longer than one possibly two attempts to actually get used to this and it was weirdly only when I thought about my fingers on the controller that I would actually get a bit mixed up. Thankfully it wasn't long before playing this game was completely effortless with this button input. It obviously works a darn sight a lot better than the free button controller as that holds your position when you fire and you lose a hell of a lot of bullets trying to work out how to play it that way and before you ask, yes I did try it with a more symmetrical controller using 8-bit Doe's wireless receiver and quickly worked out that it was a complete waste of time as the square button is now the A button aka you're shooting down when you actually feel like you should be shooting left. I don't think there's any way you can remap it either, so that was a complete waste of time. Over and done with, your best bet is just to stick with the six button bad boy. When you get going in the game, if you're anything like me, you will realise that the game is mighty hard. I mean seriously, after five or six attempts I couldn't even get past the first boss. Thankfully, an easy option is also included, which if I'm going to be honest, is anything but. 
If you ask me, Easy should be renamed to Hard and Hard should be renamed to Nightmare. Because, you know, the Doom references and all. Again, this may not be the case for you, but it was for me. For me, Easy Mode is like the infinite shuriken mode in Revenge of Shinobi. The only way to play. As enemies come your way through seven different directions in the square room, you frantically dart about shooting away and losing your bullets as you get to your final 15 or so, and a randomly placed stash gets dropped in and you need to quickly pick them up before you're running around with almost no protection. You also have a grenade that you can lob at enemies, which is a lifesaver for getting out of tough spots, or more importantly, the damn fine looking boss battles that you get at the end of most areas. And you also have the dash roll, which, if I'm honest, so far I've not been able to get too used to, although whilst talking to other reviewers, they have, so, you know, perhaps with more practice, I will too. As you blow away bad guys, they drop random items including dog tags from fallen foes which you can use at the end of your area to upgrade your marine, more health, more ammo, more grenades, more powerful weapons and a few other bits too. As you continue to play through the game and you get better at it, you start to take in just how impressive the game is. You've got excellent animations on all of the enemies with plenty of pixelated frames to make them look all smooth when they get destroyed. The environments for all of the four different stages that I could reach out of the, I think, seven look completely unique and not a simple color swap as you may expect. And guys, the music is to die for. Savage Regime has pushed the Mega Drive to its absolute limits, creating some very Doom-like rock music. You got synthy EDM tracks, more atmospheric drum and bassy tracks during the story segments. Seriously guys, if this game came out 20 to 30 years before, it would be put up there as one of the greatest Mega Drive soundtracks of all time. It really, really is. Sadly, it's probably not going to get that treatment without nostalgia helping out. But seriously, if you like what this system can do musically, I suggest looking up this soundtrack because the game is worth it for that alone. In short, even though I play the game on easy mode and even though I die more times than I'd like to admit, this game just keeps me wanting to come back and play more, more, more. I'm very much looking forward to getting a friend over to play the game in two player as I feel this mode, which I'm yet to play because I'm sure my wife only believes Mario Kart exists, is probably going to be the best way to enjoy the game. You can apparently revive your fallen comrades in this mode and the two players you choose from, John Marsh and Sarah Ridley, actually play differently with Sarah being more faster and John being able to carry more ammo along with other pros and cons of course. It's always worrying for me when someone makes a new indie game for a classic console that's also going to be getting a release for systems like the Dreamcast, the Switch, Steam, Neo Geo by the looks of it too, and no doubt plenty of other consoles, because let's not kid ourselves, time moves on, and I still believe games are getting better. When choosing the Mega Drive as the base console for the most part, it's just an easy way to get your Kickstarter funded, as idiots like me will do anything to get one extra piece of plastic on the shelf. However, Xeno Crisis is not that game. It's obvious that the team wanted to push the system further than it was intended to without adding extra tricks or hardware. And the most important thing to note is that Xeno Crisis is not only a game that feels like it belongs on the system it was created for, but it's also a bloody good game. Bitmap Bureau, thank you guys so much for sending me over a copy of this game. And you did bloody well over on Kickstarter as well. Your backers seem very, very happy. Thank you for this. Um, I'm telling you, if this game came out 20, 30 years ago, it would be worth hundreds now. Massive, massively brilliant game. Um, yeah, great job, guys. 
Great job. <laughs>